Bad, bad bitches to the left. Money bitches to the right. You can be both. Meet in the middle. Dance all night. The king has returned. I've been listening to a lot of Beyonce for the last five weeks. What can I say? I've been subjected to it in the car and the house. Uh, by today's guest, here by popular demand on our Patreon, Mrs. Twank. Lady Twank. Hello. Chloe is here. We're having a great old time. Uh, before we get into today's episode, let me tell you about some sponsors. So today's episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Manscaped.com offers you, and anyone with pubes, the very best in male below the belt grooming. I was recently at a country fair in Lisbon uh, because when I've been off, I've converted to Protestantism. But no, I was uh, I was at a country fair in Lisbon and we watched a guy shaving uh, sheep and I turned to Chloe and went, lambscaped, the best banter. No one else cared. Uh, it was great. Now, anyway, at manscaped.com, you can get the lawnmower 5.0, which is a great anti-snag uh, bag shaver. You can get uh, the Weed Whacker 2.0, which is a unidirectional sort of shaver for your nose, your ears. Um, there's the Handyman and the... The, 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 what do you call the other wee one? I always forget this one. The, the handyman, the hedger. The hedger does like your, your lines, your beard, and the, the beard, and the handyman does like all other wee bits and all. Um, I have one, I, I, I use one of mine to do my head as well, which is great. So, uh, check that out. Uh, I highly recommend going over there. You can get ball wipes as well, which are a great product, and ball deodorant. Uh, get the performance package. It's a bit of everything. Uh, use the code uh, no blasters twenty. That's the word no blasters, all one word, and the number twenty. No blasters twenty for twenty percent off and free shipping at manscape.com. We love them. They love us. Today's episode also sponsored by the finest bistro on God's green earth, Joxer. Joxer have locations in Bangor, Hollywood, and Royal Hills Brew. Um, it's a lovely place. <laughs> Uh, they do amazing coffees, great coffees and teas, all your barista bar stuff. They do great buns and snacks and bakes and all that kind of stuff. It's a dog friendly establishment. It's very friendly. People are lovely. Um, they this is the home of Chaffles. This is what you really go there for. Chaffles. They do an unbelievable fry. They open late on Thursdays through Sundays. Uh, if you want to book a late table, please do that by checking them out at resdiary.com. And um. I would highly recommend uh, booking a wee table for a date. It's a great old time. Uh, especially when Bangor's really nice for a wee, a wee change. You go for a wee walk around the marina, head up to Joxer. Great times. Uh, I would highly recommend those chaffles. And last time we were in Bangor, they were doing these wee uh, olive things. I've never had anything like it in my life. They were like wee deep fried olives. I know that maybe doesn't even sound the best for anyone. For everyone, sorry, they're they're like wee deep fried olives. They're all crispy and all wee salties, I would call them. And you put them in a wee dip and all. Silly, a uh, great old time. Comes with garlic aioli, I think. So great times. So check out uh, Joxer, and um, we love them. They love us. And uh, last thing I want to tell you about today before we get into the episode is our Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash no blasters. This is the home of No Blasters Extra Time, which is another whole podcast that comes out every Thursday. Um, you also get updates and offers. You get all our specials. Uh, never mind the mock blame goes out there. My live uh, shows go out there. Some of them, uh, the big ones, like. And we have there's just a ton of content on there. Noodle bars, mysteries, mysteries live as well. You get all these things uh, for as little as three pound a month. Uh, it's great. Check that out. You can also uh, get updates there about my upcoming show at the Opera House, Phantom of the Opera House. So um, we've lots of stuff coming out there. And it was also, of course, the place where we announced my health update a week and a half ago and received some, received a lot of love off the goblins. So that was lovely. Um, so, yeah, so just on that, um, I've obviously been away. The speculation has been rife as to whether I have, um, you know, I don't know, transformed myself into some sort of goo or if I've died. But I'm actually still alive. So thanks for Karen. Um I've seen a lot of speculation. Uh, some some of the speculation even ventured so far as to say he's finally eating too much Doogie's goodies. Fuck yourself, all right. You can't have too much of it. But anyway, um, so uh, basically, what I have just for anybody that gives a fuck is a thing called vestibular neuritis. 
which is the, the, the more uh, up-to-date term, previously known as vestibular neuronitis, which is inflammation of the vestibular neuron, which is one of the cranial nerves, runs through your ear and helps you control balance. It basically sends messages to the brain about position and stuff like that. Um, I mean like position in terms of like how you're physically standing or sitting. I don't mean like, you know, your position in life because obviously the only message my brain would receive is that I'm on top. So, um, <laughs> uh, which is great. So, uh, um, even though I do generally prefer to be on the bottom way, <laughs> of course I do. And so does everyone because it's no work. But anyway, the, um, the, uh, so it basically fucks me here. And even as I'm sitting here, I actually feel like I'm sitting like this. Or like that. It's very weird, even when my head is straight. So you get a lot of neck pain with it as well, which is shite. But here, do you know what? There's worse things out there. I'm glad I know what it is. Once I found out what it was, it alleviated a lot of my issues because some of that was anxiety brought on by thinking of finally eating too much. So anyway, and fuck yourselves as well because I've lost a wee bit of weight since being sex. Why gee, right? Anyway, it's all it's all going the right way. I'm making changes, all right? I'm no longer pre-diabetic. All right, so what are you going to say about that? There's all my business out in the street now, anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> he's back. That's what should have just should have said that. Anyway, so, so it's a great old time. So Chloe's here. So Chloe, um, tell everybody at home how I, um how I've been over the last five weeks. What's it been like looking after me? Tragic. It is tragic. He's so cute. Just I don't know. It's. I'm glad you're on the other side of it now, though. Yeah. So my well, knock on rubber cover wood. Um. So we we've watched a lot of TV. Wow. I can't really focus great on the screen, so I'm usually looking just slightly above it at the minute. But um. You want a bit of bacon? We've ah oh, right. We've loads to talk about here, right? So do you know what we watched? This is this is. Do you know what? Do you remember ages ago I had talked about getting an allotment? Uh, to the point where, like, I was actually really keen on it, and then Chloe and Kev absolutely ruined me about it, and like started calling him allotment. Started man. going, "Oh look, it's allotment man, right?" And just totally made me not get it. And then I got your horticulture Chloe, book. Chloe got me a book that's called Allotment from the Royal Horticulture Society. I've started doing shit from it now. We're, we're not running. We're not in an allotment yet, but um, we're we're doing stuff in the back garden. So Chloe did a little. I oh, know. <laughs> Nobody can see us out there. <laughs> we can hear you, though. Know? Anyway, right, right, so, <laughs> so, mate, I have so much to tell you, people. There was there was an unbelievable moment during this where we went over. Oh, right, we got swing ball. We, I was really excited. Right. We went. To, it was. We well, have. We got a swing ball, right? But I, I was, was gonna, so excited. I, can I tell them about the thing your dad said to me because it was really funny. That is funny. So we were like, We've we been went tormented over, by birds. We went over to yeah. We were getting tormented by these uh, we uh, starlings had nested in one of the vents in our house because one of the slats off the front was missing. So we waited until uh, like this was disgusting because my my car got absolutely like I mean plastered and shit like right and. Uh, so we, uh, Chloe's dad was going to lend us some ladders f- for us, i.e. Chloe, to climb up very high to fix the grate, right? Uh, but when Chloe first went up, they, they were still nesting and they had all wee eggs and all. So we didn't want to move them until those eggs had hatched. Some of those eggs, birds do this, by the way. So when the first egg hatches, it, it tries to attack other eggs. Have you seen this? Because it knows, like if there's five eggs and you're the first one out, you have more chance of surviving if you peck the other four eggs out of the nest, right? And some of them will peck into it and eat it and all. Whatever had happened up in our vent, they kicked out about three of their own eggs on the, our driveway. And they were wee blue eggs and they splatted. But mate, inside them were these wee, <laughs> like, wee, wee Quasimodo <laughs> fucking half-formed fucking birds disgusting like absolutely leaping right it looked it looked like <laughs> they the looked like two wee fucking tiny swimming pool dicks right that you would get in a cold swimming pool right just fucking just fucking sitting there cold north sea dicks right just sitting on our driveway it was fucking leaping right anyway so when we went over to get those uh when we went over to get those ladders uh chloe's dad was helping us this was unbelievable by the way 
Guy has an incredible knowledge of oh, no, I, I joked, I said, have you any, like, fucking brownies? You know, scout, ro- rope scout, tips? Scout tips, and he was like, yeah. He mate, jumped into the back he, and he, starts... he jumped up and started knocking out fucking truckers' hitches and all these different types of knots I've never even heard of, right? Unbelievable. Got, lashed, lashed these uh, ladders down for us, and then he goes, you should maybe hang, like, a, a wee bag or something off the top so people can see where the... Like, yeah. so the the perspective so they can see the like where the end of the ladder is if you know what I mean as it's hanging out the back of the truck and and as we're putting the bag on it he goes here he is he goes double bag it <laughs> and I was just like aye aye um, so that was great but anyway we what did you say so we got swing ball we got we did the ladders Chloe Chloe eventually that, that nest fell out of use and we, we got rid of it mm-hmm. And uh, and cleaned it, but we've put up wee bird feeders in all the back garden now. Back garden's like fucking Jumanji out there at lunchtime, and um, and then we uh, I've I've started. This is where I'm at. This is where I've come to. I've been off for five weeks, and uh, I've started propagating my own herbs. Like that's there's there's glasses of basil sitting in our kitchen, wait, waiting to grow. Like um, it's an exciting time. So I started doing that. Checking for the root every day. Oh, I get a root every morning, and then we uh <laughs> we uh Chloe. Chloe has started, you've started growing beans as well. Oh, mate, they're up. <laughs> the bean is up. I'm so excited. Yeah, the bean's up. Yeah. And um, so Chloe's bean in my route. And then we, uh, we've. Uh, in the kitchen. We, sorry, yeah, they're all, it's all in the kitchen. Yeah, uh, the other night, mate, oh, you can't. What was that? Uh, the other night, oh, some sort. The other night, we made, we made biscuits. I mean, I've made, I've made two types of biscuit, no. So all uh, you were missing was a wee penny. La- <laughs> Come on, he's making shortbread. It was I mean, so I mean, cute. I made shortbread the other night, right? With jam and coconut. And I made uh, a couple. Of, when was that? About two weeks ago. Now I made a Gordon Ramsay. I oh. made um, peanut, peanut butter. butter and jam cookies. Now I know some of you are sitting there going, "I don't even really love sweet stuff like this." To be fair, like I'm more of a. I love crisps. I have not had crisps since I've been off, which is ludicrous for me. I didn't even have them during the fucking FA Cup final. Which was a great time, by the way. Uh, great times. Uh, the end of the season was so shit for United, but that FA Cup final was just the best. Like, what was my my personal favorite moment? Wasn't even either of the goals that stood. It was the it was the Rashford goal that didn't stand. And why that was my favorite moment was he scored that. And even though he was pretty shit in the game, and looks like he was crying his eyes out at the end and all, just like an emotional release for him. Which if I sort of feel bad about, and then I go, he's a millionaire, fuck up, and he goes to Thompson, so I'll probably never be friends with him. But the the <laughs> um that's why yeah and uh why 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 else would it not be friends with him? Like why would he not be friends with me? <laughs> I'm signed as fuck. <laughs> I have short breath anyway. I uh I uh it, it was because they scored that goal. It was disallowed. It should have been disallowed. And they just fucking got on with it and scored the the menu goal a, a couple of minutes later, and it was just, and even though Amrabat melted me all season and melted me even in that game because I don't know if you saw this, did you notice this that literally every time he got the ball he played it backwards, like every time. Having said that, him winning the ball back and playing it backwards, the Dallow led to the first goal, so I don't hate it. Anyway, it was a great game. Uh but what what else? What else? We've, we've been watching. I said we've been. I've watched uh, Marcus Waring's, this is on the iPlayer, by the way, uh, Tales from a Kitchen Garden, which is basically him running a farm, and I love it, and then and we both love it, to be fair, it's a great show. And then we also watched uh, Marcus Waring, Simply Provence, which is him doing the same shit in south of France. It's fucking great. Um, I suppose the good thing to come out of that show is last night you... Roasted a chicken over potatoes. This so as on. the chicken cooked, the juices were in the potatoes. Stop! Stop! Was everything lit. like this was. This sounds so. It, this is simple. This was so good. You didn't even need sauce with it. It was <laughs> no, but you didn't even need. You didn't need a gravy or a sauce. It was unbelievable. Hello. It was just roast these. Do you know? Oh, do you know what it did? It did it good as well because we had we had some big potatoes left. So I peeled them and cut them into good sizes. What? <laughs> what? I pe- I, but we also had some. Hello. We also had baby boils. What? So uh, there was a couple Hello. of baby boils in there with the skin on. What? No, but this is. It was a good. 
and I put them I put them in with a wee touch of oil, salt and pepper and they're in a big baking tray and then over that I put over like a gr- like a, a shelf like a griddle uh, and, and put the chicken straight onto that so that it would drip down onto the potatoes and then with about 25 minutes left I had rosemary and garlic marinating in olive oil and I put that over the chicken but it all dripped down and all the garlic went in onto the all mate it was great filth and it needed none it was literally a dinner of chicken and potatoes it was fucking sensational though wasn't it so after five weeks you've just i've roasted a chicken well you've pretty much transitioned into a housewife is what you're telling us (laughs) you wouldn't believe that that's chloe said to me the other day that i was a great housewife that's true i actually am a great i'm great i've even started i was doing i was doing washes and all uh i did i did a wash yesterday i wasn't even asked that's how you know the change is happening wasn't even asked. <laughs> and then, I, oh, I'll tell you what, though. Like, I mean, we can talk a wee bit about I hate the wash. I hate. Why? I hate, because I, I just hate it. I hate touch. I hate the machine. I hate, I hate, uh, I, I hate dealing with it. It annoys me. <laughs> I'd, I'd literally rather, I'd rather cook all day than have to deal with doing one wash. I hate it. Even though that when the wash is done, you always hang it up and I never do. But you've seen what happens when I do it. Do you know, I believe, I've heard this before, men do stuff bad on purpose so they don't get asked again. When I, when you hang up a wash, nice loads of space over maybe two rungs. This isn't funny at all. Um, no, but I just, I you, know you're slabbering at me about the detail I was going to. This mine was about fucking potatoes. But you like, he you know when you get like a two rung wash? <laughs> you just throw it and it's like, it's not going to dry and it's going to go smelly. Right. Chloe's biggest fear in life is the smell of damp. I swear to God. Spiders and damp. That's it. Sometimes sometimes Chloe will be in the back of our house and a spider will come in from the garden. And I mean, it could be a money spider. And she will scream like a fucking... Like her as a serial killer. Like Israel Keys, the serial killer, is standing in our kitchen with a kill kit. Like, that's the way you'll react to that. But also, uh, you, you do... like. So I had this one experience. I don't think I've talked about this on here. Um, I had one experience of a smelly wash <laughs> when I was at school. So I my my school jumper. It was a, a, a the 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 old uh, the old grey Aquinas jumper. They were great. They were like they were sort of stretchy and like all comfy and all. Everyone loved our jumpers right anyway. So um, everyone. So even people who didn't go to our school, right? They were all jealous of our jumpers, right? And. Uh, I uh I remember one time sticking my jumper like put, it was a Monday morning put my jumper on I was in fifth year, uh I was going in and I had double science first two double chemistry and um I was going in and there was a load of lads in my form class who were also in my double award science class so we all used to sit together and I go in and I remember one of them going the fuck's that smell and I'm going I know I could smell it on a bus this morning it's fucking stinking I don't know what it is. And I doused myself in aftershave as I did every day going to school. And um, and some and then uh, one of my mates goes, Bart, is that is that fucking is that you?" I went, oh, "I'm sure it is." And Aww. I fucking smelled the jumper, and it smelled like it had fucking come through a dog, right? And I just went, <laughs> "That is me." And I remember going down to the bog, taking the jumper off, rolling it up, and putting it into my bag. But it had left a bit of a hum. Yep. on the rest of me and mate I was just a wee jive turkey for the rest of the day like but like I, I just remember coming back into the class and all my mates were laughing their bollocks off because I'd literally been sitting there going like some stinking cunt right and it was me and then uh, well, every we used to laugh about this then because everybody was going ah gee bullet fuck's you bullet you fucking smelly bastard bullet and then one guy who I just refused to take shit off literally all he said was he just went Oh, you and I was like, "Fuck up, you! I'll take, I'll take days of abuse off everyone else. You say nothing to me. Uh, I don't want to name him. I it can hear Shan saying, "Pick it up, pick it up, lads. Pick what up? <laughs> the podcast, the banter, the the comedy. <laughs> like it's not coming from me either. So let's let's come there together. Fuck yourself. <laughs> that's... Jesus Christ. Do we have well, any, that's, any that's, funny questions? That's what we've been doing. <laughs> what? What? I thought I was doing all right. Concerns my first day of work in fucking five weeks. <laughs> anyway. So, I cut off at the knees. You do this all the time, don't you? 
you have a way. Chloe has a way of I'm just conscious. severing my knees. What was the thing you said one to me yesterday? Please remember this. You caught me off with the fucking knees. I know. I do you remember this? We're sitting having breakfast. I know what happened. Oh, and and what was that breakfast? Fresh scrambled eggs, bought from a fucking local producer, by the way, one fifty for six, right? Right. We're sitting having breakfast, and what did you scrambled what did you start talking about? I I remember how the conversation started. You said to me about uh, <laughs> we were wa- we were watching Marcus Waring, mm-hmm. and they mentioned some insects. I think that fuck it, yeah. Some woman lifts up a chicken, opens its gooch, and goes, "Now you see, round here, that's where you'd normally see lice, but yours don't have any, Marcus, so they're very healthy and happy." And Chloe goes, "Why do creatures like that exist? Like lice that go into chickens' arses, right?" And I went, "I went to know." Now, in fairness, this is where I took it and ran a little bit, right? I didn't say that. You said, why do creatures like that exist? Yeah, you added that other bit on. Yeah, but like that's the creature. I'm just, I'm embellishing a wee bit for, you know, pick up the panther on the podcast. Anyway, right, so I uh, I said, I know, now actually looking back on this, this is mental, but I went, I know, I think it was Stephen Fry who said, when they asked him, like, whether he believed in God or not, he said... No, and 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 that if and if there is a god, it's a capricious god who has, you know, invented creatures that their whole purpose in life is to burrow into the eyes of children, right? And I said, and goes, you should host breakfast parties. <laughs> just <laughs> fucking. I'm trying to fucking eat my soda bread, and he's talking about fucking scrambled eggs and soda. Mate. Insects that burrow into kids' eyes. <laughs> well, we're watching a program about lice that go into chickens' horses. I didn't think it was a big leap. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, it's fucking mental. That's a great show, though. I've also watched loads of movies. Um, like, loads. Like, so many. Like, especially all old comedies. Like, from the last 20 years. I'm talking... The David Tell special was good. Oh, the new David Tell special on Netflix is fucking phenomenal. Uh, didn't, like... Only it's bad crack to tell his jokes, but... Yeah, no, there's, no, no, no. there's some of them that are actually, like... Like... Thigh-slapping. Laugh out loud your in your living room on your own funny. Like, yeah. brilliant. Um... And it, and then I've watched like, I've watched like knocked up all the Judd Apatow ones, knocked up fucking forty year old virgin, wedding crashers, great times. What? Just going through the inventory of, <laughs> of your day to day. I wish William was here because he never. William would have said, "Oh, I've seen that. That's class." Even this bit happens, but you just cut me off. Sorry. So. <laughs> <laughs> do we have uh, do we have any good questions there, Dan? I'm sure I'm sure there was a lot. Uh, Ian wants to know who is the better bedside manner, Kev or Chloe? <coughs> oh fuck, Chloe by a mile. Ke- Kev's Kev has been of use. He's been of use at times. The main use is that sometimes there's a takeaway we go to in Lisburn uh, that don't deliver to where we live, so we sometimes go to Kev's to pick it up. That's Kev's level of use. But um, <gasps> I'm only uh, joking. That is harsh. Kev's, Kev's been sound. He but spent Kev- ten hours with you in the hospital. He did. He did. Uh, so Kev's bedside manner that night in the hospital. Can I talk about this? Hilarious. Like, did I talk about this on the? Because I I did that episode before when I was sort of sick, but I was still here. Yeah. Um, we touched on that uh, that first hospital. Yeah. Some of the things that Kev said that night were just incredible. Uh, he helped us get rid of the birds. He helped us get rid of the birds in the in the, the they left themselves. We got rid of the nest after it was beyond use. Now I um don't want anybody writing in going, oh, no, I the uh move uh bird's nest because I do what I like. They're on they're in my fucking vent anyway. So uh I love the division though of that clip we put out about the socks. Me putting his socks on sometimes. And p- some people were like, that's fucking disgusting. And then there's other people going, I would actually love that. Yeah. And I think even the people that say it's disgusting are only saying that because they would secretly love it and don't have that closeness in their lives in any way. <laughs> I, um, I, Cl- Chloe, Chloe's been great to be fair. Um, she's done everything for me for five weeks, six weeks. So, some would say longer, but okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, oh. but Years. Th- there used to be, so there was a time, right? Because I think someone else asked this question, who has won the sickness and in health vow, right, Chloe? Because there was a time, and I mean up until about six weeks ago, where if I was sick, Chloe would think it was sort of funny. And she'll deny that, but she did use no, like to laugh. No, like man flu funny, you know, like being dramatic. I'm not actually... I not think you're, take, you're not laughing at the here. symptoms. <laughs> That's what you normally do. 
Like I'll cough. Like I cough my lungs. Like up, tiny and Tim. Chloe will laugh at the sound of the cough. Yeah. And, and uh, make you feel like you're being a wee bitch because you're not well. And then, but I think in the last few weeks you've you've uh, you've done everything. Like I mean, doctor's appointments and fucking watching movies and going to bed early when you don't want to because if the little prince is disturbed he won't sleep all night and whatever uh so that's great but uh yeah chloe probably has more of a bedside manner but kev um kev has his uses he's very funny sometimes when you need a bit of crack uh you know and whereas if i was trying to give that crack to chloe she would just go pick it up (laughs) you know um so yeah (laughs) Michael. Michael wants to know who plays the pair of you in the inevitable biopic. Oh. Fuck me. What if we choose for each other? I want Russell Crowe to be, oh, me, right, to okay. be me, obviously. Um, oh, sorry, you, you choose for me then. Oh. So, so Chloe fancies um, Ryan Gosling and she'll say she doesn't. Oh, my- no. And she fancies Jared Butler, but she says she doesn't. And who else? Who do you actually fancy celebrities? Like Ooh. like big stars like that? Oh, Idris Elba. He's lovely. Literally has never said that. <laughs> has like has never even hinted at that. I like him. Mental. <laughs> that is mental. Here, at least he sort of looks like me. Um, <laughs> you well, have a type? I don't, I don't look like Rachel McAdams. <laughs> what? Or fucking Helen Mern. Hel- Helen, Helen Mirren I don't I don't I, hold on I don't fancy Helen Mirren oh my god yeah you do I love Helen Mirren no I'm not <laughs> I nearly shit myself when he said oh, that I, say, I don't fancy her I don't I, I, I think she's brilliant uh, Rachel McAdams though yeah, yeah well yeah, I would I like agree that. I would even agree with that. I like she's her she's gorgeous she's a great actor as well she is um, Notebook yeah. Gosling no. Gosling McAdams God help him, he's not good looking at all. You love him though? No. I think he's brilliant in nice guys. He is brilliant in nice guys. But if it was playing him and Russell Crowe, it's Russell Crowe. So yeah, let him play you. Crow. <laughs> yeah. Um Who would play Chloe? Um Miriam Margolis. <laughs> <laughs> or Margolis, whatever the fuck. Whatever oh, you pronounce. Unbelievable, it. that's great. <laughs> Uh, who, who would Can play? you imagine her getting off of Russell Crowe? <laughs> I know, yeah. Who, 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 who do you think should play you? Fuck. I mean, I can't even think. Get that. Uh, oh, do you know what we watched early, early in uh, Sick Gate? Uh, we watched, and it was trash, that movie Focus with Will Smith and Margot Robbie. Ooh. Have you seen this? It's on Netflix. They, ke- they kept advertising it. It's f- oh I mean it's gashed you know what it's like a two hour long version of a bad episode of the BBC show Hustle like it's like a shit con artist movie and it's so bad Will Smith's fucking woeful in it and I said to Chloe when we were watching it there's a bit like I couldn't buy Margot Robbie and Will Smith as a as a uh you know a movie hard snog couple like where it's all like. <laughs> You know, take me now and all that. Like, yeah. I couldn't buy that from them. And I was saying, like, that it's funny because he's way older than her. They, w- they would never have, like, a young... They would never have, like, Tom Holland get off with Helen Mirren. But they, they'd make Margot Robbie get off with Will Smith. Do you know what I mean? Or, like, they'll probably get Sidney Sweeney to fucking get off with, I don't know, Sean Connery's ghost or something. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, just fucking somebody way older. It's such a... A weird thing. Anyway, so uh, I also watched Crimson Tide. Gene Hackman. Oh, Cl- Jaron, which Chloe goes, who is Gene Hackman? I I was getting my heart on. You text me saying you were about to start a film with Denzel Washington and Gene Hackman. I'd never heard of him, but I know. Gene Hackman? I know his face. I just didn't know his name. I know, but it's just ludicrous to me. That, that is ludicrous. Ludicrous. So... What what other um what other questions we'll have done? Burning questions from the gallery. Funtime. Funtime Bobby wants to know what's your pet names for each other. Chloe oh. usually calls me Funtime Bobby. Um <laughs> which is really weird. <laughs> Schnookums. Oh, I hate that. You're my honey bun sugar plum. Puppy umpy umpkin. Anyway. Um don't really do we do that? I think Chloe. 
Yeah, I would. They're not funny. That's the only thing. The one that, the one that everybody is funny does that everyone know already knows is, is chicken sausage. Yeah. To be fair, which which does get used occasionally. Um, and I, and I, my pet name for myself is the Little Prince, but that is for me. Um, but don't really do that. There's one or two others that aren't funny that are just too personal, Bobby. You fucking weird guy. But anyway, um, I'll uh, I'll t- I'll tell you over a drink sometime, Bobby. I don't drink. Um, yeah, no. Uh, Ryan wants to know what were your thoughts on the guest hosts who stepped in for you. Didn't watch any of them. No, I I um. <laughs> Willie, everybody did a job. William, Shane, Kev, Dave came on as well. Just everybody brilliant. just stepping in. What? They were brilliant. Yeah, everybody did great. Um, really, and Tommy and Throne were on as well, obviously, as guests for William, so it was great. Um, I particularly enjoyed it. Did Butler it. do one of them as well? Yes. Yeah, Butler as well. Willie, yeah. Everybody just stepping in just to help out was great. People have generally been really sound and nice, which was not, like, surprising, but, like, I, I, was, I was taken aback by it because I was sort of worried that when uh this was all starting off that it wasn't um like we're just gonna have to stop everything dead like um we didn't and that that was gonna be rare and everybody just helped so totally great uh william is just he's a wee lord like so i i, I saw somebody saying they'd love to see william have his own full show as well like which i think yeah. would be great like yeah, you definitely. know i fully watch that like so <laughs> great times what um what are we doing the rest of the year then but plans to go to America? Yeah, we're thinking about maybe doing that like in the autumn, like after after uh Opera House, Opera House stuff. Mm-hmm. I've been writing stuff for the Opera House. I've got three Why songs. Why do you need to write stuff when you're just in a performance of a I write a <laughs> <show>? <laughs> I uh I've I've written three three songs and I have another there's one that's in play with Johnny, and then there's another two that are at the at the tipping point. The ideas are there. Um, one of them is quite controversial. I've decided the theme of the show is going to be um, lightness and darkness, the light and dark, the duality of the twink, um, the phantom that lives within us all. So uh, it's an exciting time. The songs are very enjoyable. Very Chloe and Kev have heard the drafts. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm Johnny's away to uh, Barcelona at the minute, but when he's back, um, we're gonna have a chat and get get all that going and get that sorted. Do you know what I also got? because uh, I can't really look at screens for very long at the minute, so I got this thing. It's like a writing tablet thing, where you can write on it and it turns your writing into text. But like my handwriting's fucking atrocious. And it still does, like, I'd say 95, 96% of everything. Like, it's fucking class. Um, so I've been writing prose on that, like, what? <laughs> 96%. It just... People want to know what I've been up to when you Hello. fuck off. Like, I don't know. What am I meant to talk about? I've been sitting in the house for five weeks. <laughs> I'm thinking back over the last five weeks going, you know, eight sheet... Uh, <laughs> I've been eating sheets. <laughs> Eat, shit, sleep, repeat. Like, I can't... Even then, some of the days I haven't shot. So, like, I mean, I, I'm only on. joking a shit every day. But, um, like, yeah, I'm just trying to... I mean, we can't, you know... Well, there was a roadblock in Hollywood today. Do you want me to talk about that? There's nothing... What for... The election. Let's talk... You love politics, love. Let's get uh, into that. I know, see, look. No, so, no, uh, so, so even when I'm editing myself and I'm deciding not to talk about stuff like that, it's I love, wrong. I we're trying to push it towards comedy and you go f- the election. The election is funny. Have you seen the posters? <laughs> is there anybody? Yeah, no, oh. it's the same joke every year. It's terrible. I know, let me make that joke. <laughs> no. Can you believe? No. The joke. shit, this is the shit. I, I hear this in my head every time I'm saying a joke for even the second time. Oh, it's the, same. oh it's the same joke you did last week. I'm like, they're going to be the same sometimes. They're not. No, no politics banter. I know. Dan. I, I only, you know, Another the qu- banter of me mentioning politics was this. I've generated this banter because I knew you wouldn't want to talk about politics. <laughs> you were dead serious. I'm not. I wasn't. I was giving you anti-banter. This is... <laughs> He's a comic genius, Chloe. Yeah, he knew what was happening. Am. <laughs> My neck... It's throbbing with rage right now. <laughs> My eyes pulsing. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? It's oh mate. It's, it's 
pulsing like a wee fucking dog's dick. That's what that's doing. Oh, we have better crack than this in the house, but like, there's bound to be something. <laughs> we have. There's bound to be some. Do you know what that is the equivalent of? What else is there? That's what you've just said on this podcast. We have better crack than this in the house. <laughs> well, what do you want to talk about? Bring me something. Um, Dan. Questions. Questions. <laughs> Let's do the questions, Dan. Brooks, you want to know? Uh, you get one signature dish each. Who's oh. a better cook? Chloe. Oh, mate. Yeah. The, well. <laughs> right. Beef sausages. Onion gravy. Mash. Change your life. Who made that the other night? What? Who literally made that and handed that to you the other night? That exact thing, me. I but I didn't make it. Like if I was making something, that's what I'd make. Are you are you saying that that version of it that you got the other night that you said was restaurant worthy? Was. You would have made it better. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> like if I was doing it from scratch, no. I did it from scratch. The only thing I didn't make was the pig. I made, <laughs> I made everything. In fact, it was beef. It was I beef. didn't make the. I didn't make the the car. I made everything else. What's your signature dish? Oh, ravioli. Making pasta from scratch it was good crack. It is. We've done it like twice ever. But like, I um, I made. I can't believe that you've gone. My signature dish is the thing that I. What? Because you made it once. It's not my signature dish. No, because. Uh, <laughs> to see what you sometimes. Unbelievable. This is this is um, this other is people unbelievable. are allowed to cook that because you've cooked it once. I know I'm no, but I'm saying you being like the th- the best thing you would make is something that I literally handed you and probably oh, handed oh, you. Oh, that's what it is. So because you, you thought you made it better, I can't have it as mine. No, I'm saying I definitely I you, you immediately agreed that you would be a better cook than me. But the best the best mash and sausage we ever had, I made it the other night. Is that not the best mash and sausage you've ever had? Tell the truth. It was the it was best I've good. ever had. Yeah, it was pretty good. It wasn't the best you've ever had? You can see how we get in the arguments about, about other things along these lines as well. So it wasn't the best you've ever had? She goes, it was, it was good. <laughs> My lady, Shelly, I can't do a cushion. <laughs> What's your signature dish? Um, something that Twank makes well. The And I haven't made it in a while, but maybe I'll do it in the next couple of weeks if we're still together. The, um, <laughs> the, uh... <laughs> The lemon chili chicken is a good thing that I oh, make. Oh, mate. I thought you were going to say uso buco. It's lit. I also make oso buco. I mean, I mean, here. I'm giving you Italian beef shin stew here. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm giving you... Uh, what else have I made? I've made I've made Italian ragu with short rib in it as well. Yep. Which was fucking outrageous. Spicy sausage rice. I've made... Oh, uh, mate. With like a, a gremolata on top. A homemade roast tomato soup. Made with with, with sun dried tomato pesto. Made that the other day. Had a wee bowl of it yesterday to use it up. Not happy. Not good enough. Sorry. I think it would make a great episode of Master Chef if we went head. I would. Lo- I do you know what? I would love to win it because um I I was being gracious and being like Chloe going she'll say me so I'll say her and then you just went yeah I'm best <laughs> and then all the dishes you've named as your favourites are ones that I make. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So if, uh, we set, if we set this up as a competition, who judges? Kev. <laughs> Kev Kev's Kev, Kev, the only power. Kev, Kev doesn't eat gravy. Kev, he Kev, has a Sunday dinner dry. Kev That's has like, the palate of of an old infirm man, doesn't he? Like he doesn't eat eggs. He, he doesn't like mushrooms. He didn't. He have doesn't fish eat McDonald's until he, he or have, Chinese. He wouldn't have had fish until he was like in his late thirties, and even then, like he'd say, "Oh, you'd fish now." You can make him gip just by talking about beating eggs on the cup. Yep, like he kept, and and then one one of my other sisters has the palate of, of a nineties eight year old and only eats stuff like out of Iceland. You know, what I mean? yeah. And chips, yeah, yeah, like mental. Um, and then one of my other sisters, it can actually cook, but chooses to do everything ready, steady, cook style. So everything's done in 20 minutes, no matter how long it actually takes to cook it. Do you know what I mean? Which is mental. Um, who would judge it? Who would be a good judge? Do you know what? We should, we should get Gareth to judge it because he has a bit of a, yeah, he has a, bit of a gourmet him, palate. Yeah. Like, he would at least know. Oh, mate, do you know what we made? Uh, we got a steamer out of the Asian supermarket. Oh, no, hold on. A bamboo these, steamer, right? These were the shit. And yeah. I saw a recipe for 
pot stickers and these little pork du- soup dumplings, mate. The so clo- so it's like minced pork with like scallions and spices and all in it. Yeah. And then Chloe made like you, you make like you have uh, to set like like a chicken stock jelly, which sounds mm-hmm. disgusting and probably is. But you put that inside. You put a wee cube of that inside the the wee uh, what do you call that? The wee it's the like dumpling. dim sum is it? Uh, inside the dumpling. And then when they're steaming, it that, melts. That thing melts into like a sauce. So when you cut it open, you drink you, the soup. You and get then you get this wee soupy meat. I good. They were they were a joke. Like they they were serious. Um, this is making me uh, almost erect with hunger. But um, <laughs> uh, what other questions have we got there, Don? A couple of people asking about the FA Cup final. Your thoughts on Ten Hag another season or? I would. What are your thoughts on Eric Ten Hag? Love? Would you want to see him stay or go? I don't know anything about football. All I know is Bruno Fernandes. Do you know what's mental? I That's saw all I hear when he's playing FIFA. Bruno Fernandes. Now here, here's an interesting thing that I heard. I saw a video. You know Martin Tyler. Uh, I, he's a commentator. Uh, he he was a veteran commentator. He was talking on a podcast the other day. I saw a short clip of it where he was saying at the start of the season. <coughs> excuse me. All the big broadcasters, you know, when they're getting those things done where the, the players, like, turn around and walk up to the camera and go, right? They are, all the players also say their names so that you have the player saying his own name oh, good, so yeah. you know how it's meant to be pronounced. Mm-hmm. And his name is meant to be pronounced Bruno Fernandes. Right. So, that, but everyone calls him Fernandes. And if you were to start calling him Fernandes, people would go yeah. nuts the way they do about the FIFA I guy. I know David De Gea. Speaking, sorry, this is no blasters, by the way. What? David, David De Gea? David. No, well, De, I, well whatever, but De Gea. Yeah. I saw a video of him training in a park in Manchester the other day. It's very sad. Like, uh, he's United's it? goalie, and, and they, they, no, they just let him go. Like, they let his contract run out, and nobody bought him. So he's just had a year to himself there. I thought he was playing for City. No. Why did I think he was playing for that? Are you thinking of Kevin De Bruyne? De Bruyne. Yep. The Brian. Um, that's what they said on FIFA. Speaking of FIFA, the new actual FIFA. Have you heard about this? No. So two K. You know the they make like two K basketball, two K whatever. They've secured FIFA rights, and there's a, an actual FIFA coming out this year. In in, isn't it two thousand twenty four? It <laughs> it might have been. I think I think it's called. It's going to be called FIFA twenty five. 2K25 or something like that, but I, th- I think it's coming out this year on that next, which is exciting. Bum, ba, dum, bum, bum, bum. You're a wee dick today. <laughs> That's this is a FIFA podcast. I'm allowed to talk about I'm FIFA. Just slowly. I know. Do you remember yesterday? Do you remember yesterday? Whenever I was on that call, there was this moment. Do you ever be in a, in in like a in like a meeting on online or something like a Zoom meeting, and somebody does that thing? You know that first the first ten minutes of. Guys, I just want to run over why we're all here. And you're like, we know. And they're talking. Chloe looked right at me. I was literally sitting like that. <laughs> on the chair, just going, I can't cope with bollocks. Oh, anyway, that melts me. But uh, what was that question again? I forgot. Oh, Ten Hag. I... Is that a person? Yeah, Eric Ten Hag. Yeah, I, he's United's manager. I personally would let him go. The, the, the FA Cup was great and all. The... The Premier League's not good enough. It wasn't good enough. You need to do it week in, week out. I would let him go. Who are you bringing in? Kieran Bartlett. Uh, I don't know. because I, I didn't agree with... I, I probably would have... I probably would have gone for Pochettino or somebody like that. Yeah. I think... Um, I think now that, like... I don't think they're getting uh, Kieran McKenna. I think he's going to stay at Ipswich, isn't he? And Rooney was no mentioned once or twice, but he's away, obviously, to um, Plymouth. Uh, and then loads of people got snapped up there. So, uh, speaking about Rooney, did you see his thirty-five questions or 50 yeah, fifty-three questions? questions did you watch it? I haven't finished it. I'm twenty minutes in. Did you hear the one? What song would you listen to before you go out to play? Fucking Stereophonics or something? No. Was it? no? Um, what do you call her? Calf- no, Wild Horses by. Not that Tyler Bellingfield. No. The girl from Susan Boyle from Susan Boyle, yeah, I did fucking hear that. I, I did, yeah. That's Mental. To, that's to get him up for like a big derby game. I know, yeah. Calms him down. Uh. I'm like, all right, Wayne. Do you know what I mean? That's like going, 
Or right, lads, just... we're all going on a night out here. One night to be confused. Do you know what I mean? A bit of heartbeats. Or, or does he no just way. enjoy the video because he's into grannies? Ah, oh, here, well, he, do, he does love a granny gooch, doesn't he? Like, let's see, remember? It's rich coming from him, isn't it? Helen Murren. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Helen Murren is timeless. She's not a granny. Anyway, um, Judy Dench is a granny. Helen Murren isn't. There's a big difference. Is there? Right? Yeah, Maggie Smith's a granny. Helen Murren, no. He's blinded by love. Cle- Cleopat- Cleopatra's old as fuck. I'm, a lot of people still like her anyway, so... Did she not die when she was pre-40? <laughs> Probably, I. Fuck up. He's only about a 70-year-old, not being a granny. I'm not trying to write her, love. I just think she's a good actor. Jesus Christ. It's going to be... Do, do you know what's mental? Hel- Helen Murren, you know, that's... Like <laughs> Helen Murren's name's the problem in our relationship. Anyway, so... <laughs> I remember ages ago. Didn't you see a video that said that? Something like that. It was like a video I saying it like, like a meme. It yeah. was like a meme saying, "If you're ever feeling down, just just feel good about yourself, knowing that your name's a problem in someone else's relationship." I'm like, I was written by someone with a fucking big old sack of issues, like, and poss- possibly a big old sack on their forehead. But um, what um, do I have a couple more questions now to, to round, round us up? Emma wants to know how did you and Chloe meet, and can we hear the story of the proposal? I'll take the, it from here. The the the, <laughs> the 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 movie, the proposal that I love, that it, that's somehow a problem in our relationship. All right, I'm gonna try to make it real quick. Went for dinner. He pretended to have food poisoning by the starter that we had. Came back with a guitar. Sorry, hold on. This isn't how we met. This is the sorry. I, this I'll, is the proposal. Sorry. I'll do the how we met story. You do the proposal story. Go ahead. Went to our favorite restaurant. He pretended he was going to be sick because of the prawns that he had. He comes back with his guitar, sings Jim Martin. James Martin. James Martin, <laughs> the chef. John Martin. Sorry, it, meant more, it probably meant more to me what the song was. And Sorry. I said yes, the end. That's it. It was a good meal. It was. The best bit was pretending not to be well and being like, oh. And I had... Um, it was a Christmas dinner. We had like prawn cocktail, turkey and ham. It was like early December. And we, we went... Um, it was actually more like mid December, if you recall. It was the tenth of December, in fact. I, but, um, did I not just say the tenth? And I had in there. I was, I was, I couldn't hear you over your Millie voice. But the, <laughs> the um, <laughs> <laughs> they let us on. I, I, sorry, I don't know what the tenth is. <laughs> um, so T E N F F. So I um, so it's a tenth. So. That night, I I had um I had phoned the the manager at that restaurant ahead of time, and asked could we be placed in a secluded area because obviously if she says no, I don't want anyone to hear the screams. So <laughs> I uh no we, so they put us normally you'd be sitting in like it was like a, a sort of a nice big country pub that we used to go to, and um. They put us upstairs and it was like, I, she was like, what are we going up here for? I was like, I think they're really busy. I went up to a wee privately, wee private booth and all. And then I went to the bog and came back in with the guitar. And hashtag she said yes. Hashtag I win. Hashtag I G. Anyway, so we met at a gig in 2015, mm-hmm. which was on the 10th of December. And uh, it was a gig in Contained, which was... So he proposed the exact day a year later. Yeah. So we, we um. The the gig, the gig was like contained. I don't know if you remember it. it you, you definitely don't because nobody ever went to it. It was like a it was like a load of shipping containers stacked, and it had like a big tent, like. Was roof. it not just a pop up? Yeah. I thought it was like a like a fleeting thing. It wasn't like a. No, permanent... it, was, it was there for a while though. Seriously. Yeah, and uh, it was down near the docks. And it was absolutely fucking Baltic. My whole memory of that night is just being freezing. And Mickey Bartlett was MC. And he's going to me. There have been about five comedians on. And he's going to me. I'm literally going to go on here. And when they're still clapping, I'm bringing you on. Right, I'm bringing you straight on. Maximum I'm doing is like two minutes. I'll bring you straight on. So I whip off my coat and my hoodie. And I'm standing there in a t-shirt waiting to go on. I'm literally fucking freezing with nips. Or like fucking, what do you call them, water fork things that you find water with, you know, the fucking water, div- what? Diviners. Diviners, yeah, I'm like fucking ring, right? And, uh, you know, the <laughs> things they use for ghosts and all. And, um, and uh, 
Like I'm, they're going mad because I'm finding the ghost of the crack that we used to have on this podcast, right? <laughs> and, um, I. Uh, <laughs> How can you differentiate between finding water and finding ghosts? How can you? Use you it you can't thing? drink a ghost, so the um. Nope. I don't know. <laughs> How do you use it for the same thing? I don't know. I think when you're using it for a ghost, you're being a ball bag, and when you're <laughs> using it for water, it might actually work. So, I um like seriously. So I um. I just remember going on and doing a set, and but Mickey Mickey went, but Mickey did about fucking fifteen minutes before he brought me on. So I was literally standing there going, properly frozen to death, like. Went on, did the gig, it went well. Chloe uh, was in the front row and I slagged her off and then we became friends and then we started. He said if I didn't get on the gravy train, it was going to put out of the station. (laughs) 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 Do you remember sitting down uh, Botanic? We used to sit down there. Oh, please, please please, let me say, they're going to love it. Don't be, like, you're being on such a I think I think we met like a couple of times for a coffee. <laughs> he says, You're such an asshole. He goes, You're such an asshole. <laughs> God love you, you're so cute. I, I do love you all now, obviously, right? No. <laughs> he goes, He goes, <laughs> What are we? <laughs> and I was like, Eating chicken. You know, <coughs> I just got a heron. It's not even there anymore. Yeah. Oh, man. You drop coleslaw everywhere out night. That was yeah. funny. Those well, I'm glad. Those enjoy. Good. Listen. <laughs> enjoy this last episode. No blasters and the uh, the last few crumbs of my dignity. <laughs> um, That's brilliant. This has been Here, a, a lovely episode. It worked. What does that say about me? I oh, know it, it, it did. It did work. It did work. Um, Choo choo. <laughs> The fire controller wins. So, um, I, uh, yeah, it was great times. I, I, I'm going to need to talk about this with the doctors, but, um, <laughs> it's been a lovely time. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. Do we have one last question, Dan? A good one? We'll finish on that. <coughs> Patrick wants to know where's, where's next on your Irish grave robbing travels? Oh, fuck. But trying to stay out of graveyards, actually. Um, I've been staying away from all things death related. I didn't even want to watch Lethal Weapon last night because it's too too murderous. Um, where would I go? Do you know? I've I've always wanted to. Um, I've always wanted to go around that big a big graveyard in Dublin, the the one that has like all the fucking national leaders and all in it. And can't remember the name of it now. Mount, not that's the present Mount Mount Joy. Is that the present? I don't know this. Is that what? What's the big? There's a big there's a big cemetery in Dublin. What's it called? Glass Nevin. Yeah, w- I'd like to go around that. It has like really famous people and all in it, so you could go do that. It's probably I wouldn't take any rubbins of those. Um, r- might rub myself against it, but um, see if I can catch some patriotism off it. But anyway, um, this has been a lovely. Uh, we also sorry just before we go, we also watched a lot of uh, Egyptian stuff where people were robbing graves. What like w- we've had. <laughs> up and he's starting a new story we'll talk about that in the next episode when there's a, a real guest on so um <laughs> such a wee dick um all i can hope for is that people have tuned out before it got to the what are we bit but anyway um it's been lovely to be back i will uh hopefully see you in the next one and uh thanks very much for coming chloe and uh, yes. i will uh i'll see you later take it easy bye Oh, no.